Hallelujah. We are grateful to God as we worship Him this morning. If there is one thing to do in life, it's to worship God. As you wake up in the morning, we have got reasons, thousands of reasons to say, Father, thank you for life. Brethren, as we continue walking in the mountain of God, there are different advantages you get as a believer. Peace. Sickness is removed. Challenges are gone. Breakthrough I met it. And you live a life that you call it heaven on earth. I'm saying this not because I want just to motivate you, but I've seen it. I walk on that realm. I wish all of us would go to understand Christ Jesus and the price he paid for us and walk in that realm. So, from that perspective, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's in you, it's temporary. Why? Because the Bible says you can walk through this valley of shadow of death. Yeah, some people might be walking there. But the Lord and the staff comforted me. I'm here to say, be courageous. The night might be stormless might be problematic, might be serious, might be difficult. But I'm assuring you, morning will come soon. So we've got reason to see that our morning, our next day is coming, which is good and greater one. And God is faithful. David, the servant of God, says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not the land of the dead. In your life here, you will see the goodness of God. God is too big and rich. To ravish you with whatever need, whatever demand, whatever issue that you're going through. This morning, as we go to the Lord to worship Him, I ask that we open together the book of Zam that will be our call to worship. Zam chapter 42, that will be reading to bring us to the worship season time in Jesus' name. The book of Zam chapter. 42. So open with me your Bible in the book of Psalm chapter 42. I'll read in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, As the heart panteth after water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O Lord. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come to appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continue to say unto me, Where is thy God? 
When I remember the things I poured my soul in me, for I'd gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of the Lord with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holiday. What art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted me? Up thou in the Lord, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down with me. Therefore will I remember thee from land of Jordan and Ebonites and from the hill of Mizia, deep cold unto deep at noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me. And my prayer unto God of my life. I will say unto God my Lord, why art thou forgotten me? Why God I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bone, mine enemies reproach me while they say daily, Where are they God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why thou disquiets within me? Hope thou in the Lord, for I shall yet praise him, who is my health of countenance and my God. I wish as we go to the Lord to worship him. Put this question new. Why are you quieted yourself? Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you quiet? Lays up. Hope in God, for yet we shall praise him. God is God. That is gone. Yesterday is not today, and God has something better for you. This is a brand new day for his glory. Worry not. Stand up, let's praise the Lord. Father, we are grateful that you've given us this gift of life. We thank you because what you have in your mind for us is fresh, is new, and glorious every day. We thank you for this wonderful, miraculous, and glorious day before our eyes. Thank you for the divine guidance, protection, mercy. The one I ask, oh Lord, we've seen another new day. I, I will give you glory, worship you. There is no one else who is like unto you. You are the miracle maker. You are the Lord in Jesus' name. Here we are, Father, gathered again before your presence. And we pray that the power of Holy Ghost will continue to minister unto us. Father, I pray that as we come before you and ponder your word and pray, may your ears answered and give us a breakthrough that we may praise you, that we may worship you, that we may say, Lord, your name is worthy to receive all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. So speak to us, Father. Manifest your will. Heal the people who are listening this morning. Deliver them from the sword of the enemy. May your presence cover us in Jesus' name. And everyone that listens to this voice, say amen. Amen. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. So we thank God again. I'll give him glory this morning. And uh, this morning, according to your word which God has given to us, the Holy Spirit leadership, our subject will be called Father, break every yoke of the enemy in my life. Father, I pray, break every yoke of the enemy in my life. Brethren, I wish you understand this subject better and it will be better for your life. What are yokes? Yokes are things that restrain something from the freedom of moving the direction we're supposed to go. I'll give some two examples and I'll give some practical examples, three of them. If you are putting up a field of a farm or a small farm, a small garden, and you plant certain crops, there might be some restraining on top of the ground that make the seeds not to come out and sprout forth with leaves in a free way. They restrain the seed from growing. It is expected that the seed, after planting, it will grow and raise to become a big tree. 
But you find the tree is not growing. The seed is not coming out. There might be the yoke that are within the field. Might be them some waste. It's just like the seed that is sprouting up in the plastic bag. It reach point, it will die. It will never result into what is expected. But also those who know the cow, used for farming. When two cows are yoked together, and one of the cows is lazy, the one who is faster will be having a burden to pull the one who is lazy. And therefore, it will be constrained to be the best of what it can be. So yokes are anything in your life that is putting you down from where God wanted you to go. The Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 28 the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 tell us something which Jesus also said about the yoke and uh, our Lord was clear when he's talking about the yoke. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. I'll read in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and humble in heart. And you'll find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Brethren, Jesus calls for us to go to him. And there's a group of people he's talking about. Those who are weary and tired. Some people are wearing tired of yokes of their generations. I met a lady who had a yoke that in that generation, in their family, in their father's line, mother line, they always need to go to a witch doctor so that they can get children. So there was a man in the village whom they were supposed to go after soon you get married. And unfortunately, the man was just having some relationship with them so that they can get babies. Then she came to me and said, I, I, I don't feel that that's right and correct because the man actually caused a lot of the family members to be HIV positive. He would have said that he's giving them some medicine or traditional treatment, but typically was sleeping with them. So she was not ready to go there. And I will open a Bible and read this verse that saying, Come to me while you are wearing and every rider. Carry my yoke. Now, there's a yoke of Jesus. So don't think that as you come to Jesus, that's it, that's off. No. But he said, my yoke is light. What the yoke of Jesus? Prayer. What the yoke of Jesus? Lusciousness. What the yoke of Jesus? Avoiding yourself from the word. So I told her, I need to continue praying and pray. In the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1, the Lord Jesus told us very clearly that as you pray, continue to pray, pray without ceasing. So she, she entered into a program of prayer for 21 days. By the grace of God, before finishing a seiko on 21st day, she conceived. And to God, be the, to God be the glory, she received not only first child, second child, and the third child. Why? Because he decided to put off and put off the weary and tiredness in her life. And Jesus is ready to receive it. But I've met people who are not ready to pay the price. They come to God as if he's a traditional healer. <laughs> they come to Jesus as if he's a traditional uh, herbalist. They want one time hit, one time go and move away, boom, and continue their lifestyle. No, 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 no. We don't go that way with God. God wants us to save him. How do you save him? Keep on praying. Keep on reading the Bible. Keep on going to church. 
so that you may experience his full presence. The Lord delivered the Israelites from the land of Egypt and brought them to the good land or land of power, land of honor. Why? Because he wanted them to save him. Even when Moses was asking Pharaoh that I want to go away from these people, he was telling that I want to save the Lord in the wilderness. And that oh, going into the wilderness, God brought you out of Canaan and brought you so that we may save him. How do we save God? Is by forsaking sin, is by reading the Bible, is by praying. And those are the things which are practice of Christian from time immemorial. And as you walk on that lifestyle, he said you will have peace in your soul. Whatever sin, whatever trouble will come, we will hit the prayer. We will hit Jesus Christ learning him. And we will hit the angels of God. The Bible says that those who trust in the Lord, the angels of God will surround them every time. I met a brother. He had serious sickness in his body. Actually, he was having diabetes. I said, Pastor, I've gone to every mountain of prayer. And nothing comes out of me. This sickness is killing me. And it came from my mother's house, my father's, all my mother and my father's house. They've got this serious problem with diabetes. It's a kind of um, inherited disease. I told him that, um, do you believe that Jesus paid it all in the cross of Calvary? I told him that I've been to Calvary. I've been to Calvary. I've seen the man hanged on the cross. I've seen the man saying, it is finished. And I told him that Jesus finished it all. Are you ready to receive the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? He said, come to me all you are weary and heavy laden. I need to be honest with this and the Holy Spirit is pushing me for this. There are some altars of church called church today. They want to imprison people. They pressed more yokes on people's life than even what Jesus wanted them to be. They call the name of Jesus but they want to enslave people. Now some people have gone to those altars and in the end of the day their situation became worse. And they've just to deliver every money they have, every wealth they have, every property they belong to them, just to give to those called prophets. I'm not against prophets, but I'm talking about the prophets of doom, who they talk about bad desires, bad things, evil things happen to people. They're trying to do evil. They're not prophesizing according to what God has said to them, but they're prophesizing according to what they feel and what the stomach to get from them. Now, unfortunately, many people have been chained there. So they said, we've gone to this altar. And he told me, that man told me, that I've gone to this altar, I've gone to this place, but nothing's coming out. I feel even more. I've paid all the money I had. All the money, my salary I've been giving to the prophet, who said that if you give all your salary this month, things going to be right. Second month, third month, fourth month. And I still, my situation is still continuing to be bad like this way. I told brother, you've been cheated. Jesus said, my yoke is light. And my burden is small. As you make your mind up, the Bible in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 makes it very clear that Jesus took every curse from us. He was made a curse on the cross for us that we may inherit the blessings of Abba. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Jesus finished it all. I've been to Calvary. I've experienced true life. I've experienced peace. I've experienced the joy of the Lord. I've experienced life more and more and more greater peace than you can talk about. I know where Calvary brings me to. This morning, I argue, bring all your burden. All your yokes to Jesus Christ. He's waiting for you. And I can assure you, soon after this prayer, I see every disease in your body gone in Jesus' mighty name. I see every sickness in your body gone in Jesus' name. I see every inherited chains of darkness in your life are gone. And will never come back again. As we join our hands to prayer, 
Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be born in heaven. Whatever shall be born and we shall lose in heaven, in earth shall be lost in heaven. Why? Because Jesus gave us authority against every power, against everything the enemy has. And today you've got power to go before the presence of God and destroy every art of Satan and to get freedom and freedom to be least and to be more free for his glory in our lives. Brethren, I told a story of that man with diabetes. And by the grace of God, we went through a seven days continuous prayer, not even fasting. And by the grace of God, on the seventh day, God raised him. Until today, the family curse, the diabetes is gone. Brethren, you are not supposed to continue living in sickness. No! Jesus paid it all. I cast that sickness in you that is tormenting you. Come back. Jesus is calling you. Come back. There is power in the cross of, on the cross of Calvary. Free given to you. Jesus did not just go to the cross because he wanted to go to the cross. No. Don't listen to those people saying that, you know, this is part of God's suffering. This is part of training of God. That's a lie. Jesus not say so. Jesus wants you to be free today. Jesus wants you, Mary, to be free today. I met a sister. Everyone in their family was married to a man who was not faithful and trustworthy. So they ended up carrying the burden of the family themselves. So the money beats you and it still gives you the responsibility to take care of the family. Every money you get, you're becoming a slave. He she was crying bitterly. And I told my sister, weep no more. Jesus Christ paid it all. Let's break this curse because if you don't break it, your children will suffer the same. By the grace of God, we broke the curse, but also that man, we prayed for him and he was raised. Jesus Christ paid it all. And is ready to help you to move from where you are to the greatness and more glory. We are not brought out of Egypt to be chained again, to be slept. No. The book of Isaiah. Make us to understand that. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. Let's read together. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, the Bible say, Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished and their mud dried out for th with thirst. Captivity is a yoke. It restrains your freedom to be the best of what God wanted you to be. Brethren, I met people who have gone to these yokes, uh, to altars, and they were told to fast for 100 days so that the problems can be gone. They are totally brainwashed. Please, brothers, Jesus paid it all. His yoke is light and his burden is small. This morning, he's calling you. Come back home and let's pray together. And I see after this prayer, Every yoke in your life is broken. Isaiah 10 27 say that in that day thy burden shall be removed from your back and the yoke shall be broken from your neck. Anything that is painful to your life is not from God. Is from the devil. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38, puts very clear. Jesus Christ of Nazareth walked around, healing all those who are sick, and removed the oppression of the enemy from their lives. This morning, Jesus is here and wants to remove the oppression of the devil in your life. Want to remove every burden the enemy has pressed on you. 
so that you may walk in the freedom of his power. Let's pray. Say, my Father, thou art in heaven, I give you glory for your might hand that has protected me even to this moment. Father, thank you because this is a season of my multiplication in my life. I thank you to see this day and this hour. Glory be to your name. Father, I thank you that I will live and not die so that I may bring forth and witness of the greatness in my life and all entire earth to know your goodness in Jesus' name. I break every satanic authority which is restraining my breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Out! I decree every curse, every covenant of delay in my life, delaying of my blessing, die in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, failure, bad luck, should never be in my life. I refuse to fail. I refuse bad luck. In the name of Jesus, out of my soul. Father, I pray, every power from my father's house that restraining me from achieving my best, die in Jesus' name. Brethren, I feel something from the Holy Spirit. There is a man who is listening to this preaching. God has given him a lot of grace about writing books. But he's failing to start. He started and he's failing. I decree judgment upon that spirit that restrained him from becoming a star. Die out of your body. Out in Jesus' name. Say, my father, every power from my father's house, my mother's house, that is constraining me from reaching my best. Die in Jesus' name. Every power that is constraining my economy, my finance, my education, my work. Die now in Jesus' name. Every burden that makes me not to raise and shine. Die in Jesus' name. Father, I pray. Every hour of wickedness, of delay, of my blessing, which has been thrown on my star, you arrow, this morning I command you, die in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, every arrow of backwardness on my star, die in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray, every arrow, of stagnation in my life every area of my life that is stagnant you are a liar die wreck in jesus name every yoke of stagnance out of my body out of my spirit in jesus name father i pray every yoke of giving up every yoke of failure out of my life in the name of jesus my lord i pray Every plan of the enemy, every oyster plan against my life, causing delay for my success, causing delay for my progress, I command that plan, scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, every incantation upon my life, upon my picture, whatever altar is using it for this, for putting me back. I command that incarnation. You are a liar. Die in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, every power of the enemy that has stolen my star, you power, you are a liar. Die this morning in Jesus' name. My Lord, I pray, my name that is written in the book of the failures of life, let it be removed. I erase it and I write my name in the book of those who prosper for your glory in Jesus' name. My Father, I pray every satanic court that is gathered together against my cause, 
may that coat scatter tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, all the ears that have lost, may them be restored in my life by fire in Jesus' name. Every sickness in my bone, every sickness in my blood, every sickness in my marrow, I command you sickness, hear the word of God. Die, die in Jesus' name. My Lord, I pray, any strong man that is walking against my success, is walking against my progress, you are a liar. Die this morning in Jesus' name. My Lord, I decree and declare that failure is not my part, is not my parcel. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, may fire of revival arise in my life. Let me be a prayer warrior. Let me serve you. Let me do your word. Let me be honest with you. Let me walk in the presence with power. Let me walk with your favor. In the name of Jesus, my Lord, I pray for your blessing in my life. I pray for your miracle breakthrough that you make a way in my life for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. So this morning, Father, I come to you, Jesus, Son of God. I enter and see the Calvary cross. I see you saying it is finished. So you sickness in me, what are you waiting? Out in Jesus' name. You disease in me, out in Jesus' name. You infirmity in my life, out in Jesus' name. I put on the blood of Jesus. Lord, be my God. Be my guider. And help me. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. There is no God like unto you. I worship you because my yoke is gone. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Brethren, as you make this prayer and repeat it, I see your life is raised. Join us in a prayer mountain every day. And I see in 21 days, every burden, every yoke, every stunning invasion out of your life. Now, I see the move of Holy Spirit to release you from every incantation. You might have gone to the altars of called Christians, but are not Christians. There are people using the powers of darkness, proclaiming that they are prophets but they've chained a lot of people now i take authority as a servant of jehovah and i decree judgment upon that spirit that has entered you to torment you out of your life in jesus name get raised from today you are free every doom spirit pronouncing evil against you is no more having power on you may god bless you in Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And mercy of God the Father. Be with us now and forever. Amen. Sure. Goodness and mercy. Shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I shall dwell. In the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name. Amen. May God bless you. In Jesus' name.